Well, all right, guys, what you can see here is I got a pickup in to repair. Um, and this is actually a pickup. Uh, one of my buddies that builds amps, Clater Amps, you can find them on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description where you can find his channel. Um, anyways, he contacted me the other day and said he's got a guy that's wanting to get a pickup rebuilt. And um, I'm assuming the reason he wants to have this pickup rebuilt is because this is a pretty vintage pickup for my area. There was a company here in the 90s, I want to say, called uh, Blue South Guitars. And uh, they built guitars and, of course, they wound their own pickups. And um, to keep that guitar original, he wants to see if he can salvage this pickup. Um, he sent me this right here uh, in a bag like this. So this is all the parts I have of it. The only thing I really know about this pickup is that it used an Alnico 5 magnet, I'm assuming. That's what this is, the A5 means. And that um, it had a cream color to it. That's about all I know about it. Um, as far as all the other parts, I'm going to have to order other parts and, and see if I can uh, rebuild this guy. Now, the one thing about it, he said that um, it just doesn't work at all. And I want to try to figure out why. And then once I figure out why, um, I'm going to rebuild this guy and hopefully get his pickup back up and working. Now, my first thing I want to do is I'm going to see if I can get a continuity between these two wires here. If you can see... This right here is a start or finish, however you want to look at it. And then this is the other end. So this is basically feeding through the coil. It's coming back to this connection here, and it's feeding through this coil and then coming out. So depending on which way you wire it, if it's the start or the finish. So if you look at it that way, if I check from here to here and I've, get, I've got continuity, that means I don't have a break anywhere in these coils. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do here, I've got my meter. And I'm going to go to this diode continuity check right here. And basically all that does is, is it gives me a little beep when I get a connection. You're there, my battery's low. Got a little battery sign right there. Hopefully it'll last. Anyways, hear the beep. Okay, that's my continuity checker. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check between these two right here and see if I'm getting con connectivity. So I am not getting a connection there at all. So now what I'm going to do is I want to move to this middle one and see if I get a connection here. Nope, I do, I do not. All right, let's check this other one. And if you saw what I did there, I'm basically checking from here to here then. So I'm just pretty much checking this coil. So I'm going to check this coil by going from this same lead here to this lead. And I've got a connection. So that tells me... From here to here, this coil's good. I'm gonna try something. Cause this one won't give me a reading at first. Wiggle this guy around. So I'm not getting anything now. But I am getting something there. Huh. Okay, so I know whatever it is that's in this coil, because this one right here is working. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this one good for now. Um, I'm just going to get a piece of tape. Now, let's get this guy off of here. I've got my soldering iron here, and I'm just going to heat this joint and break it apart. One thing I like to note too while this thing's warming up is, is that, you know, normally on a humbucker, uh, the lug side is your north side and your screw side is your south side. Now, depending on how they built their pickups, I've contacted the guy who um, sent my buddy this pickup to see if he can get me some information off the other pickup. So I'm assuming there's two of these guys at least in that guitar. And if not, it's not a big deal. If it's just one pickup, then I don't have to worry about it. But um, the reason I want to know that information is, is because if he goes to put this pickup back in his guitar with the other pickup, and um, he wires it up wrong or does whatever, uh, he can get these out of phase with each other and it won't sound right in the middle position. Um, they'll work fine by themselves, they'll hum cancel and everything else, but once he goes to the middle position where he's using, you know, if he's trying to use both these pickups at the same time, he's going to get on it. They're going to be out of phase and it's not going to sound right. So anyways, like I said, normally the lug side's the north, the screw side's the south. Um, so now all I have to do on that is just figure out which side is which on this. So anyways, I want to separate this guy, and uh, I'm going to go from there. Simple 
enough. I've got my bad coil here. And now the thing is, is they've used electrical tape to tape this guy up and these have not been potted. So that was my first sign that it might have some issues with uh, being the age that it is and not being potted. A lot of times you can get uh, breaks in your, um, you can get breaks in your coil actually just from the vibrations of your strings. So I'm hoping this stuff just kind of peels off and doesn't pull half the pickup apart with it. Maybe they use something underneath it to protect it. I don't know. There's a piece of a wire right there. It's not a good sign. You can tell. Maybe it's just some left over. There's the coal. There's the wires. There's some more. It's kind of cool. They basically folded the wire. I mean the tape. You can tell there they folded the tape so that it didn't have a sticky side to the coal, and then they wrapped it. Huh, it's pretty smart. So I'm just going to see if I can't just cut this guy right here. It looks like some of that did, didn't did stick, which I've still got some wires sticking. You can see this. And technically that worked out, but I don't know. Hopefully all I have to do is, is if th this doesn't work, I can just take some of these top windings off and save a lot of that coil. So there's the end winding right there. There it is. Apparently it shot across the room here. If I can just find the start. The only problem with that is, is the bad thing is, is the start's going to be up inside of the pickup. I don't see it. I, I think what's happened is, is that tape has just ate away. Whatever that chemical is in that tape is may have eaten away at that wire and just made it brittle. So, anyways, that tells me one thing. I've got to. I've got to. I'm more than likely gonna have to rewind this bobbin right here. Um, I'm gonna try to get a reading off of this guy. He wants to. He wanted me to use 42 gauge wire. So I'll use 42 gauge wire and I've got it written down um, on 42 gauge wire about how many how many windings give me a certain uh, ohm reading. And uh, so if I can get the ohm reading off of this, I kind of do a little bit of calculations and figure out about how many I need to put on this one to, to get them to match. But this one is wound clockwise because our windings are coming off counterclockwise. So when they spun this guy, when they spun this guy, they spun it this way, but it's winding it clockwise. Can you see that? You see what I'm saying? They spun it backwards. Now, if you spin it from the back side, they spin it clockwise, and it's uh, winding clockwise. Does that make sense? That can get kind of confusing sometimes, I know. So we're going to go back with a clockwise winding on it. I'm going to just get a piece of tape, W on it. And then we're going to go back with the 42 gauge. And I'm going to try to get a reading off of this guy and see about where we're at on that. Right at 4.4. 4, so I'm just going to say 4.1. 4. I'm going to say around in that area. 4.07K. Okay, so I finally got a reading on this guy of about 4K. Um, so that tells me this dude was probably around 8K range together. Um, now, I talked to the customer last night, and he said that uh, when he got this guy, I think he said it was around the 7.8K, and he didn't want me to go over uh, 7.88. He wanted me to stay try to stay below 8K um, as a total pickup. Um, I told him that this one was bad from the get-go. This one was still good, and then I talked him into just going ahead and rewinding both of them. And then he actually mentioned about using the vintage-coated wire, or the vintage wire, which is the enamel-coated wire. Um, I don't have any of that, so I've got to order some. I mean, I've also got to order um, all the screws, lugs, backplate, um, all that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here.
Um, cool history about this thing. This was actually made by a guy in my area, uh, Ron Knight of Blue South Guitars. I want to say it was a guitar company. I tried to do a little research on them, um, but they were out of Florence, Alabama. And um, that's right across the river from where I'm at. We're in the, the shows area is what we're called. But um, anyways, it's pretty cool getting to see something that, that uh, somebody in my area built probably in the 90s. I want to say he said it was probably from the early 90s when he made this for him. Um, he does not want it potted, so we're not going to pot it, um, but we are going to um, rewind them both with the vintage enamel coated wire. Now, um, to go back and look at my notes, I remember when I built the pickups and I did that series on it, I always told you to kind of take notes of what you're using. So, you know, back then I'm, I used this Temco 42 gauge wire. I was getting around wine one just a little bit hotter than the other one, maybe two or 300 windings more than the other one. So I've got to do that. I've got to order the uh, lugs, the screws, the back plate, and all that stuff, magnet and everything. And I had talked to him about uh, maybe trying out an, an Amico 2 magnet. This one's got the Amico 5 in it. That way he can kind of swap it out and see if he likes the Amico 2, if he likes the 5, or, or, or vice versa. How, however, I just give him some ideas on it, and um, he liked that too. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to order those, these parts. I'm going to get them here. We're going to tear these guys apart, and then we're going to wind them. Next time you see me, it'll probably be three or four days later. Okay, so finally got the wire in. Um, this is the vintage enamel coat wiring. It's been about probably four days since I, you saw me last. Um, what I have done here is, is I've got, did a little bit of a calculations here. Well, if I go back to what we talked about earlier, um, I've figured up about 1,250 to 1,300 windings per K and um, per 1K. Uh, the 42 gauge Timco wire, which is roughly this stuff right here. Um, and I'm hoping this stuff is around the same. Like I said, I've never wound with any of this stuff, so I'm not for sure. But I'm going to try to go off of these same uh, calculations here for that. Now, if I go to my pickup that we're going to be doing here, this guy, the customer wants uh, between 7.4 and he wants it below 8. So I'm shooting for 7.6, 7. Point, somewhere around in that area. And so what I've done here is, is I've got, uh, I've multiplied my, what I was shooting for, which was, I was actually shooting for the 7.7 K right here, and I just multiplied that by the 1250. So if we do that, I'll show you. So I was shooting for 7.7 7 K, so 7.7 7 times the uh, 1250 per winding gives me 96.25. So I did 96.25. Um, I actually just went to four, so I'd have an even number. So 96.24, divide that by two, it gave me 4,812 per bobbin, 4,812 windings per bobbin. Now he wanted me to wind one just a little bit hotter than the other one. And so I was going to do uh, about 200 more windings on one. So in order to do that, I subtracted 100 from one and added it to the other and that gave me a 200 difference on it. So I took the 4,812 minus uh, 100, gave me 4,712. And then I added it to the other one, giving 49.12 with a combined total of 96.24. And hopefully, if all my math works out right, that gives me right at uh, 7.69K is what I'm shooting for. So with that being said, now what i got to do is, is I've got to figure out exactly. I need to do some information on these pickups and seeing which way they're wound. And you remember the last one I did, it don't, it don't matter if you wind both of them clockwise as long as you wire them opposite of each other. So you can wind them both the exact same way. I'm gonna get this one apart. Let's pull this one apart to see what we got here. I'm assuming they're both wound the exact same way though, but could be wrong. So this one is wound clockwise, just like the other one. So like I said, they're both wound the exact same way. And, um, but when you wire these guys up, you're gonna wire them up where if you your start comes here and it goes clockwise, when it comes out of here, you're gonna basically wire it to your finish on this one, and it's gonna run counterclockwise. Does that make sense? So both wind the same way, but you're gonna use the different 
uh, wires to uh, start and finish on. So what I gotta do now is I gotta tear these guys apart. I'm gonna cut these, wind these windings out of here and get them ready to wind. And do that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this X-Acto knife here. This one's really loose. There's how much wire's in it. 7.73 grams of wire in that one. All right, let's do the other one. One thing about, I was thinking about when trying to figure out how to charge for, to wind these guys, this other one, is how it's gonna charge her. Uh-oh. How much, know how much wire I'm using. And so I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna weigh this stuff just to, you know, get an idea about how much wire I'm using. All right, so let's see how much this one weighs. 8.35 grams. That one's 7.7. .7. That one's a little bit, had a little bit more windings on it than that one. And a total combined of 16. I'm use some real. It's a wood bobbin. That's cool. It's really neat. Check it out. Like I said, this is a company that built pickups or built guitars in my area in the 90s. And the, the guy who uh, I'm building the pickup for knew the owner. His name was Ronnie Knight, I believe it was. I don't know if he's still around or what. I'd like to meet him, though, if he is. So we got our bobbins cleaned up, empty, look pretty smooth. I might go through here and kind of shave off some of this nicks and stuff here. Pick up tape here. I'm going to reroute this inside. So there we go. Not too shabby. <clears throat> So we're going to do both of these clock counter, I mean, both of these clockwise, and we are going to put, let me get some tape here, 4912 on this guy here, and I'm going to do 4712, and hopefully that will be around what we're looking for with this wire here.
from Pennsylvania This keeps on state, I just can't relate Now I'm bloodshot, spitting sober And I wish this night was over Cause I'm coming down, can this be fate? So setting up for the second pickup, I'm gonna write on here what I got on the first on the uh, lug side. I got a lug bobbin has 4914, and we're gonna go with 4712 on this one. All right, that went pretty good. My white paper in the background here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the bottom since I'm winding this thing counterclockwise. My wire's going in here and I can see it. I can see it moving back and forth. If I close one of my eyes, which I would get kind of tired after a little while. So you might want to get one of those pirate patches. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad idea maybe to get one of those. See, I don't get tired. So we're going to 4712 here. So here we go. I'm just going to start out slow. Make sure all this stuff's working right. Make sure we're not getting on the outside. That look good. All right, so here we go. Forty-seven twelve. So there we go. We've got our finish right. Nice, our start right there. We've got our finish right there. Now, like I said a while ago about weighing this stuff, I've got a scale right here, and when I started, I had two hundred thirty-six grams of weight on this thing. So let's see how much we actually used. Two hundred and one. It'd be we use 30 roughly 35 grams let's get it exact 35.36 35.36 grams so that's a handy way to where if you're built if you're 
fix some pickups for somebody. I mean, this roll of this stuff was $64. So um, you'd hate to, you know, make a client pay for $64 worth of pickup wire. So we can weigh it, see what we use there, and you can charge by the gram. So there we go. Now I've got the other parts for this guy. Ordered all these to finish this dude up. I've got back plate. Got that. I actually bought a nut because I'm, I'm building a uh, guitar. I need a nut for it, so I got it. So here's all the parts we're going to use. Now I'm going to solder on my lead wires here. I'm going to use black as my start. And I'm just going to take this guy and just spin it around that wire a bunch of times. If I can. So I've got my start here. And I'm going to use white for the finish here. Same thing, just taking the wire and just wind it around this thing a few times. I'm just going to wrap this coil a couple times with this tape. If I can. Alright, there's one side. Now we're going to do the other side. Okay, so I got them back together here. Um, so what I want to do now is, is I'm going to try to get a reading off of these guys. My battery on my dang good meter is about dead. So I ain't been able to get really good readings. What we'll do is we'll go from our finish to our finish here. And that'll give us that. Give us meter's dead. I can't get it to give me anything. Old school, I guess, here. According to this, we're about a 7.5. Um, I'm going to get my other meter battery in it uh, and, and check this for sure. But uh, if that's the case, we're, we're pretty pretty good where we want to be. Now what i got to do is, is I've got to get all this stuff back together. The hardest part, really, is to get all this together. Uh, and it, if we go back and look at it, you remember, I, I this is my start right here for both pickups. Um, this is my finish for both pickups. So what this is doing here is this start is coming in this pickup and it is winding counter or clockwise, correct? And then it comes out of my finish. Well, this one does the same thing. It comes on the start, goes clockwise, and comes out the finish right here. So if we do this, if we wire these two finishes together, when we send our power or we send our stuff through here, comes in, goes clockwise, comes out, and then when it comes back in on our finish again, it's actually going to spin counterclockwise and come out on our end. If that makes sense. Um, if you wired it up like this, the pickups would be out of phase with each other because they would both be spinning in the same orientation. It'd be going to start going clockwise, coming out of the finish, going in the start, going clockwise. We do this, this one's coming in, going clockwise, it's coming out, going in the start of the other pickup and running counterclockwise and coming out. So that's why you can wind both of these clockwise and still get, um, still be able to wire them up um, to where they'll, they'll be in phase together. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire these two, splice these two together. I've just got a piece of tape on the front to where this thing can just kind of fold open. But I want to get these wires. These two are gonna be soldered together right here, two finishes. Those two coming out of the pickup. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now hopefully, when I put them back together, so we've got our connection inside there of our two starts, I mean, are two finishes. This is the bottom of the pickup, so I'm just going to kind of run these down. I couldn't fit this wire through these holes. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some tape and just try to wrap this guy and clean it up. So kind of hold it together while I'm doing everything else. The city wanted me to put an Alnico 2 magnet in it. 
this is an Amico 2. I'm going to put these lugs in. So there's those. We're going to put our north side to our lugs. Okay, so as you can see what I've done here is I've basically uh, made this my ground. Now I went ahead and grounded it to my back plate here, and this is going to be my hot. So this will be the one that will hook to your, this will go to a ground, and then this will go to your um, switch or whatever you've got in there. So all I did was I just brought the one off of my lug side, I mean my, um, yeah, my lug side, and I grounded it and then came out the back here with that wire and then I just soldered on a white lead to this black one here so that um, you could have a differentiation between the wires. So you know one's a ground, you know this one's a ground, and you know this one's your hot. And then I'm gonna wrap this guy here with some more tape. The thing I like about this pushback wire is, is I mean, as you can tell there, I've pretty much gotten rid of all of that connection there. All I gotta do now is just kind of wrap some tape around it. And should be good to go. So now we're gonna piece this guy together here. We're gonna put our south, our north to our lugs, our south to our screws. And we're gonna put in our spacer here, upside down. And we're gonna put in our spacer there. I'll probably just put all that in once I get done. I'm gonna try to piece all this together. Okay, there's our finished pickup. I'm gonna try to put this thing in one of my guitars. I'd like to see if it make, if it works good or not. I don't have a, a guitar that I use solely for testing out pickups. I probably need to, but I don't. So anyways, that's the finished pickup. We were getting right at 7.5K on this guy. Let me see what it says now. Almost right at seven, seven and a half K, which is pretty good. I'm gonna write that down. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna get my other, my other meter going good and see if, uh, I can see if I can get a more exact measurement of what we got here. Anyways, that's it. All right, as you can see here, I've got it plugged into the uh, bridge of this Les Paul. <laughs> because of the way I've got the same wired in here but um and it could be too that I've got the pickups uh, one wired a little bit higher than the other um, it could be causing a little bit of a buzz with it but Thank you. 
anywho, so there you go. Sounds really good. Um, I think when I get done building my uh, guitar that I'm building in there, I'm going to be using uh, something similar to that. I'm going to do some, uh, maybe do that exact same thing. So Alnico 2, uh, the lug side bobbin has 4,900 and around 4,900 uh, windings on it. The uh, screw side has uh, 4,700 roughly around that area. Um, so one's a little bit higher than the other. And uh, Alnico 2 magnet. And um, it's basically where I can change it in and out. When he gets this thing back, he can put the Alnico pipe in there if he wants to. And see what it sounds like. <laughs> Biggest thing I'm noticing though on the clean is it's kind of got a it's got more warmth. But it's, but anyways, so yeah, there it is, guys. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know. And when he gets his thing in his guitar and messes around with it, I'm gonna see if he'll send me some some video of it, and uh, maybe we can hear it then too. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like. If you liked it. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.